anytime I look into people's lives, because it's my profession, I'm a very critical thinker. I'm very analytical. I look deep into people's lives. What puzzles others don't puzzle me. Because I know that when it comes to our lives, our background can put our back on the ground. We might not even know who is playing the music. We may not even know the lyrics. We just be dancing. I'm sure a lot of people around her, my guests, would have wondered why suicide. She said it. And they said, ah, this girl that talk, 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 talk. You know, I told you with one of my guests that I had that there's no way you will not let out. We are not wired to bottle up. Nobody is wired to bottle up. Everybody must have an outlet. Our own outlet, my guest that I had some months ago, is to just talk to herself. Her own outlet, my new guest, is to just talk, 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 talk as if she's a parrot. To people who talk out. So when the act of committing suicide came up, she became a puzzle. She became a wonder. She became a wonder because people don't understand what is hidden in her various emotions. She has been damaged emotionally. And she felt the only exit is to exit her life and just let it go. Unfortunately, if she had lost it at the time, people wouldn't know why she left this world. As a matter of fact, I would have said nobody would know why she left this wicked world. From parenting, wickedness has started in the journey of her life. But I'm glad she never did. Because sometimes, somebody is hearing me now, you are going to a store. You feel like actually taking your life. Let's get out of here. But don't. Most of the time, all of the time, there's always an intention of the Creator to allow you to go to Creator. If I tell you my own story, maybe one whole month episode will be my story. For me to become a wounded healer today, I have had stories. And every story building has a story to tell. I'm glad I did not commit suicide. I'm glad I did not lose my mind, even though I almost lost it. Thank God I did not. There's always a grace that keeps people in the midst of their turbulence. If you are hearing me now and you're going through stuff, you're just it's too overwhelming, please reach out for help. Help is always available. Don't die in silence. Don't let death close the chapters of your life. Because all of us, were in a volume of books, there are chapters in our life. Let's resolve. Let's resolve. Let's resolve. Open the chapters of your life. Yes, I have my guest in the house today. She has said so many things. The issue of suicide really got me emotional. And of course, got her emotion. I wish you had seen her face. We have to be making her to wipe her tears several times right in the studio. But we thank God that she's summoning courage to bring it out. And the more you bring it out, the more you heal. It's no more inside. That's one thing I've learned in life. I remember several years ago, I had this fungal infection and um, I didn't want to, of course, I love my toenails, I love my open shoes. So I didn't want to let anything happen to my shoes, to my nails. So the person doing my pedicure would tell me, mommy, let's remove this nail, let's treat it. I said, no, don't worry. I put medications, I will treat it, I will scoop it out. Sometimes it's smelling. I said, just leave my nail. Let me have it like that. And one day I had to preach in the United States and um, of course that the day, a few days before I left, I had to do manicure and pedicure. And the guy told me, mommy, remove this nail. I said, no, just manage it and put plaster. When I come back, I will manage it. And um, I started ministering. The first day I was ministering, my nail fell. Blood was everywhere. The place that I was standing was not rubbed. It was tarred, white tarred. Blood was everywhere. And uh, for two weeks, I could not do anything. I could not preach with slippers. I couldn't even wear slippers. And then um, I was asking myself, okay, there's a message in this. What do I have to learn? And the Holy Spirit said to me, whatever you cover will decay. Anything you're covering is going to decay. So bring it out, heal, and become a wounded healer. 
Yes, I've said a lot actually, but somebody is learning something. I told you what I'm doing with my guests. It's not for you to say, oh, who, ha, and get excited about her story. Her case is a teaching catalog for me. So I'm using her episode as teaching catalog. Welcome, my girl. So, after, uh, okay, well, my neighbor came in and he lost the, he lost the rope. Which I used to, you know, which I used in hanging myself then. So from that day on, when, when my parents came back, they were like, because my neighbor had to call them that something happened. My dad was in Lagos then, and my my mom also. So they had to come back that very day, and they were asking what happened, like why did you decide to? Because there there were there were times in second in primary school then that they, they don't really buy things. I, know, I told you, they don't buy books, they don't buy things. Because my teacher is this type of person that calls out every subject with people's name on it. And most of the subjects, I don't have the, the book. So she like calls out the, the name of the people that, 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 that submitted the note. So most of the books, I don't have. So she called my name. And there, there, this day, she, she gave me 24 stroke of cane. Like, 24 strokes of cane. I could neither stand nor sit. Then, so like, the whole thing, like, it happened in primary school and in secondary school, they, they, they were still doing the same, like, because my teachers were like, in, in secondary school, I was becoming brilliant. So they're like, even if I'm brilliant, that would be the fact that I'm brilliant. I should, I should be able to, I should have notes. But my, when our results came out for Becky, my results was better far better than that of my my immediate sister and when I took it home then my my dad didn't even show any sign of like as, as if he was sad that I was the one that got the result like I think in his mind he was thinking why was it not my sister that got the result why did I get the result instead of my sister so it was as if someone even died in the house that day because everybody was just quiet like there was this quietness in the house, nobody talked, nobody would say congrats, nobody said anything. So I had to like tell my neighbor, I shared it with my neighbors because they were like, if I should get at least four A's, five, six A's, that the, the, this neighbor of mine, or this neighbor of mine that used to encourage me. So the man said, if I should get at least six, five to six A's, that he was going to like buy something or give me a gift. So when my result actually came out, I, I got six A's. And the mom was so happy, he was like, wow, you tried. So he asked my sister for a result and she could not even bring it out to show him. So then when my dad, my mom, my mom actually called him then, he said, okay. So when he came back, he did, not even, he did not even ask until I took it to him myself. I said, dad, this is my result for um, our uh, exam. He said, eh, what happened? And in my mind, I was like, uh-uh. That if it were my sister, if it were to be my sister's resort, I know my daddy, he will, all of us in that house will drink much. Everybody will drink much. In fact, we will we, we, we celebrate with catfish. We will buy things. But then he was like, eh, we're well done. So he just said, go and keep it very well. Don't, tear, don't let it get done. So that in case you want to, when you want to enter SS1, so you so you not misplace it. So, then all, 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 all those thoughts keep coming to my mind. Like, I was like, was it that when, when I was not doing well, he was saying, my sister, my sister, my sister. Now I did better and he, and he did not even say anything. He, he even got more like he got offended before. So then I was not thinking maybe that, that was what actually led to me trying to commit suicide. So I was thinking maybe, maybe it, it was more than that. that Maybe he did not actually want me because I had been saying I'm a bad luck, I'm a bad luck, I'm a bad luck. So, and to my mom, my mom always said um, she had issues while she and my dad were in courtship. That okay, after 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 giving birth to my sister, my elder sister, she she had me, and then when she had when she got pregnant with me, that was when her uh, mother-in-law started maltreating her. Her mother-in-law sent her packing. So she had to sleep outside under the rain with me. So for like two, about two, three months. So 
Like, I was the, I was the only... Like the memory of our pain. Yes, so that was why the hatred was strong. If you have gone through stuff and you refuse to heal, you are going to transfer that pain and the wound to an innocent life. This girl is so innocent. She came to the world to become someone. She was striving. Apart from coming to the world to become something, she was striving to just please everybody. At least love me, love me, love me. But you can't give what you don't have. Somebody said, if you are going to give me a cloak, I will look at the one you are wearing. I've changed my slogan. I'll check your wardrobe if you do not borrow that clothes to party. Because really, her mother is still wounded. She's been through a lot. And she's transferring aggression. And that's why I tell people, hurting people hurts people. The mother is so hot that she had to go ahead and hurt her children to an extent of thinking that the next solution to get this off her back was to commit suicide. This is sad. Don't use your pain to preach if you are not healed. I need to focus on that strongly. Don't use your pain to preach. When I say preach, I'm not saying preaching good or bad. Don't use your pain to reach out to your children, to reach out to your husband, to reach out to your wife, to misbehave if you are not healed. Heal before you can say, I can use my pain to preach. If her mother was healed, she would have understood the dynamics of what she went through and she would say, no, 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 I'm not going to hurt my child. My child is not the reason for my mother-in-law to treat me that way. It is normal marital crisis. I want to say thank you to everyone watching this our episode. I'm sure you've taken a lot in. Here, don't allow anything to truncate your beautiful life. Don't transfer that aggression to your children. What you don't hear in your parents, you pass the button to your children. What you don't forgive in your parents, you repeat. Everyone that has been through stuff, if they don't let it go and heal, unconsciously, they pass it down. I'm still going to talk about that. I appreciate you for watching me. My guest is still here. We're still coming back. It's long, but I'm sure you are taking in something. I appreciate you for watching. I'll be right back. See you next time.